Welcome back guys, this is Roland from Graphic in Motion and this is the light bulb explosion video tutorial series part number four. And in part number four we will add some lighting to our scene. So we will use some redshift lights, set them up and make our scene look really beautiful. So let's jump right into it and let's get started in Cinema 4D. Now let's add some lights to our scene and make this look really beautiful. So first of all, I want to add a light that will light up my whole scene a little bit more. I could use my dome light to do that, but actually I don't want this because I want to have a little bit more control over it. And then when I just change the exposure of the dome light, yeah, this is not really good and it doesn't really create a nice look. So let's leave this on one and let's use another light here. And in this case, I want to create a spotlight. So let me quickly go out or let's do it like this. Let's lock the camera in the redshift view and let's go out of the camera right here. Now I can push up my light here, move it back, then rotate it a bit like so. And then I will just bring this out and you see now I have this small spotlight. But this is not exactly what I want. But I will care about this in a moment. I will just select a nicer position here. Something like that should work out quite fine. Okay, now let's go to the settings of this spotlight. So you see by dragging out this small little dot here, I can change the intensity. So this is actually changing the intensity of our light. And here I can change the cone angle and I want to make this bigger. Then I want to change the fall off curve. So I want to make this way smoother. So I can increase this quite a bit. And then I want to change the angle here as well, just to create a really smooth, a really smooth fall off here. So that's not too bad. Now let's maybe rotate this a bit more like so. Maybe reduce the intensity, oops, reduce the intensity a little bit just to create something nice. That's not too bad. There's one thing that I don't like, and this is the color of my studio material. So let's quickly open this up and let's go in here and let's actually make this maybe fully desaturated grayish because then I can control the look just through the lights. Yeah, let's do it like this. It's probably a little bit better. Okay, now you see I have a very smooth background light and I have my light bulb and it already looks really beautiful. But of course, I want to add more. Now I need a light that will simulate the light bulb shining. And therefore, I will use, let me quickly rename this actually. This is my studio spot. Okay, and this is the dome light that's clear. Now let's add in another light. And for this purpose, I will use a point light. And this will be my light bulb shine. So let's come in here to this light bulb, shine light, and put it in the middle here of my light bulb. Now I want this to be, oops, what did I call this light bulb? Now I want this to be a visible light. And to create visible lights in Redshift, we need a Redshift object and we need a Redshift environment. That's what we need. And now we can go to our light bulb shine settings, go to volume and set the contribution scale to one. And you see immediately we get a visible volumetric light, which is pretty cool. Now, I want to increase the intensity here a little bit. Oh, you see, this is very, very, very intense and it is really foggy. So I have to change the environment settings here a little bit. And the most important settings that I need here is this face. I really want to shift this towards the light. So I don't want my scene to, to look foggy. You know, I just want the light to shine. And if I put this to a high value, something like 0.9, you see then my scene doesn't look that foggy anymore, but the light gets really bright. And this is exactly what I want to achieve. So let's go now to our light and let's turn down the intensity here quite a bit. You know, we can work with small values here. So if I set this, for example, to 10 and we have a very small spot here. Now I make sure that this is a little bit closer to my filament here. So let me quickly move in here into my bulb. Let's take a look where this is. And 
you see it right here. And I don't want it to be inside the filament because otherwise we will create a little bit of a funny look. So if I increase this now, you will see, well, actually it's not a problem. It works. It works actually quite nicely. So let's go back to this environment because I think that maybe 0.9 is a little bit too much. So let's set this maybe to 0.8. Then we have a few more, a few more light streaks here. These look very interesting, to be honest. And especially probably when the light is breaking, then we will get maybe a few more of these. So let's take a look at that. Maybe we can do a few interesting effects with this. Yeah, that looks really nice. But the scattering is a bit too strong for my taste. Let's see how we can shift this. Then the attenuation, I think, is not good if I change this because this will make it very foggy. Yeah, no, that's not good because then the whole scene appears to be very foggy. Let's set this back to the default. And can I use one, maybe 0 0.1 here? Then everything is very foggy. That's not what we want. So let me take a look. I need to balance this a little bit better. So let's bring this in a little bit further. Maybe 0.85 could be a good value here to use. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And scattering, let's see if I turn this down even further. How this looks like. Okay, now it's not really scattering outside of our glass anymore. Oh, this is now because of our, this is now because of the filament. So now let's just shift this a little bit. Let's move it in front here then it should at least create something. Yeah. Oh, actually I'm moving it in the wrong direction. This is why it's creating this nice shadows here. So this looks actually quite cool. Yeah, let's do that. That's beautiful. Let's shift it back here and let's create some nice light rays. This is amazing. Oh, I like that. That looks really beautiful. I think that I will, I will use it as it is. That's really good. Now, again, into my environment and let's set this to a little bit of a higher value because then the light rays are a little bit smaller. And I think this is spot on now. Now we'll go to my light bulb shine and change the color here to a slightly bluish tint. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, um, actually, let me go to my filament color because I can just feature this and copy this channel and copy it over to my light because then I have exactly the same, I have exactly the same color, but it will of course reduce the saturation here. Something like that. A bit more maybe. Okay, this looks really beautiful. So this looks looks very nice. Now let's add in another light. And I want to have a light that really creates a light cone around my light bulb so that we get the impression that our light bulb is actually lighting the scene. And therefore I will use another spotlight. So let's create another spotlight, redshift spotlight. And this will be my light bulb spot. So let's... Focus on this object for now. Let's zoom out here a little bit. And let's move it up. Let's rotate it 90 degrees so that it points down straight onto our light bulb. Now we can again increase this intensity here, as you see. Now I want to be, this one to be blue as well. So I will take the same color from here. So I copy this over and paste it onto this. Now let's increase the exposure, first of all, to make this a bit brighter so that we can see what this does. Let's increase the cone angle quite a bit. And let's again change the fall off curve to make it smoother. And also change this here, the fall off angle. Let's see what this does. And this looks actually pretty good. So now we have this nice light cone 
And if I increase this intensity even a bit more, let's take a look how this looks like. Because later on when we have this explosion, I want this to be very bright actually. And yeah, it's not too bad. So this looks quite nice. So let's set this to maybe two for now. So that you get only a slight shine. Okay, so I like this, but again, I don't like the color of my studios. I will go in here and go to my base properties and I will just paste in the same color that I had before. Oh, this didn't work. Okay, so let's go in here again. Let's try this out. I want to copy this and paste it in here. Yeah, now it worked. And now we'll come in here and just lower this quite a bit and make it a bit warmer something like that let's take a look yeah and i think that this looks better this gives a better overall feel to this and we could also tint our our dome light a little bit bluish so again let's copy this in here and now this is also slightly bluish now we just have a nice bluish tint all over our scene okay so let's take a look i think that this looks actually pretty beautiful and also when our explosion is happening, the pieces are flying out. Actually really, really very nice. And then this will get revealed. So I like that. That's really cool. So now we have to do a little bit of animating here because in the beginning, I of course want this to get brighter. And there is another thing we have to do. Our light bulb shine light, the visible light, has to wiggle with our light bulb. So we have to put this into our light bulb now so that this also is affected by our wiggle that we set up. And now this should nicely wiggle with our light bulb and this will create some really nice reflections or refractions here, light beams. Now let's take a look how bright this should be. At around 75, when this buzzing starts, I want it to be maybe somewhere around where I am now. So I will go to this intensity, maybe we'll make it a little bit less intense, 1250, and I will set a keyframe here. Then I know that right before the explosion, uh, 124, I want it to be quite bright. So we go to 2500 here, for example, and maybe even a bit more, 3500. Mm, let's make it even more intense, 4500 because this is building up the energy now to explode. So let's set it to 4,500. This looks quite nice. Now I move forward one frame and now I want to have a light flash. So now I will get crazy. I will put in 25,000 and see what this does. And this will probably break everything. No, it doesn't. It just creates this really, really small or, or, or short light burst. Let's create a keyframe. Let's move forward one, two frames. Now let's go back again to where we were before. This was here. Which value did I have here? 4,500. Yeah. So I will put in here 4,500 so that this light flash is really short. And then let's say until... Oops, I didn't put in the... I didn't put in the keyframe. 4,500 keyframe. And now let's say until maybe 175, frame 175, this should be invisible. Let's take a look here how this looks like. Then here it will get invisible. Actually, let's drag it out until 180. So we have this here, then it is flashing out, exploding. and fading away and revealing the logo. I think that this should work really nicely. And according to the changes of this intensity or of the light intensity here, oh uh, yeah, and I need one more keyframe, of course, because in the beginning I want this to be at zero. So let's set this to zero and let's add in a keyframe here as well. Now I also have to animate the spotlight, the studio spotlight, or the light bulb spotlight, yeah, this one here. So let's create some keyframes. And I think I will change the exposure here. This is a little bit easier in this case. 
So on 75, I think we will put in something like 2.5 here. Let's see. Yeah, that's a nice value. Let's create a keyframe. Then on 124, we will get a little bit brighter. So 4.5 maybe. Mm, this looks better now. This is nicely shining. Now we move forward one frame and now we have this really bright light flash. So I really crank this up maybe to seven now. And this should create a very, very, very super overexposed quick flash here. So let's see, maybe we go to six to make it not so harsh. Yeah, that looks good. Now we go forward two frames and go back to our value that we had before. That was, okay, I forgot it. Horrible, 4.5, okay. So 4.5, 4.5, create a keyframe. And then until, yeah, we can take this down here a little bit faster than our light bulb here in the middle. And we will set it back to two or something, you know, that it is still there, but not that obvious anymore, or 1.5. I think that this will work quite nicely now. So now the light will just get weaker as we travel towards our logo, and this should be fine. Yeah, that's really good. Now, only one thing to do in the beginning here, this has to be zero as well. And now we should have a nice animation. Um, let's take a look here. Funny thing is that this is not zero here because of our intensity multiplier. So what I have to do here is, But actually, it doesn't really matter because we have a little bit of shine already because our filament is already glowing. So I think that this is perfectly fine. We will just leave it like this. Then it starts glowing. The light intensifies, it gets brighter, brighter and brighter. And then it starts shaking like crazy. It explodes and it gets darker again. Okay, so this is perfect. Now, there's only one thing left, and this is I want to add a little bit of depth of field here to my scene. So let's go to the camera and let's add in a redshift camera tag. Let's go to Bokeh and let's override and let's enable it. And I will use the focus distance from my camera. And to get a nice focus distance, I will just use one of my filaments here. So let's just use this sweep here because this is actually the, the object that I really want to keep in focus all the time because this is where my logo will be placed later on exactly at that point. So let's take a look here whether this is in focus here. It actually is not in focus. This is very interesting. Let's take a look. What mistake did I make here? Let's take this one here. Camera, focus object, sweep number one. Still not in focus. This is a bit strange. Let me take a look at this. Why this is not working. <laughs> so let me see. We have here this focus distance. We take this from the camera, but it is not working. Okay. Okay, so maybe I have to disable it for a moment and enable it again. No, this doesn't work. Well, then let's just take another focus object. And instead of the sweep, let's take the helix. Maybe this is the problem. Yeah, this is probably the problem because the sweep is a generator. Yeah, that was the problem. So I have to take the helix. Then I have the focus on my filament and that's what I want. Okay, perfect. Now we can take a look um, how our depth of field is looking. And you see, it's looking actually quite good. We can even increase this a little bit. So let's go to our settings here and increase maybe the, the power here a bit to, or the, the CUC radius here a bit to two. This will increase it and we'll make it a bit more obvious. Let's see how this looks like. And let's see how this looks like in the end here. Yeah, everything is really nicely blurred in the background. This looks really nice. So I think that this is really okay. We have a very nice look here.
Okay, so far so good. So now we added some lights to our scene and it already starts to look quite beautiful. And the next part we will take a look how we can now export this, how we can render this in Redshift to get it over to After Effects. By the way, don't forget, if you like this video tutorial series, then please consider subscribing to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much and goodbye.